about five gallon buckets in it, fill it halfway with water. I recirculate the water through the little red cooler. It has a heater and a pump in it and a thermostat. Set it for 132 degrees. Run it, costs about 25 cents a day to run it. And it will do three of those four gallon buckets every three days, or equivalent to a bucket a day, right? So I do 30 buckets a month, and the stuff sells for $3 a pound. So a four gallon bucket weighs 20 pounds. That's times three dollars, sixty dollars a bucket. We do thirty a month. So it's eighteen hundred dollar a month income. Here's all the sides kind of thing. We go out of the Philippines, all the ten of those coolers together. Still the one pump, the one thermostat, right? But it can do ten coolers. It takes a little longer to heat up the first, you know, batch all the way around. But once you're done, they're all insulated. They just hook together with uh, washing machine hoses. Make take the temperature. The pump is from the solar pumping on a house made to take the temperature. You can't use a regular pump because you're pumping water, hot water. It's hard on pump. So it's just a little rich. We do those, we ship those out up here. $900 all over the world. For Arabian, we have one more. That's the mother of that one there. She was born here on the property. Um, it's shade from biting and flies and stuff on it. So we take the worms, we do the same thing, we put them here. The worms can't fall through the holes because they're laying sideways. They get down here to the ferris wheel, they ride it up to the top, grab the right taste right right over, and they all fall into a five gallon bucket. And so then they sell for 10. If they're pure worms, it's $10 an ounce. Bed run is $40 a pound. That's where you just grab a handful of stuff. And then it comes out. Now, the waste product, I just a quarter inch just to show you. This is normally considered by waste product. It's too small to go in the aquaponic garden. Mm -hmm. We take this, we mix it one third with um, a coconut fiber and one third with worm casting, and that's for our soil block. We make the little soil blocks, two by two inch, or we'll stamp them out. And this is just perfect for the soil block. Better than buying, because the word I'm allergic to the word buying. Buying what? Vermiculite. How you doing? Hey, Good to see you. One of my partners over in Maui. <laughs> Yeah, we helped us out with, uh, what was the name of that school? Lokilani. Lokilani School. We put in a big system over there. for. They deal with a lot of handicapped kids and that. And uh, we was instrumental and filmed a lot of it. And, uh, so we do this two things. We, we use it to get the sand out of the cinder, right? And then we also use it to harvest the worms. So it paid for itself in about six months. That's the only one I think of there is in Hawaii. It's a great thing. But it costs like $1,200 just to ship it out here. It should, not the weight, it's the bulkiness, the space that it takes up. And that, and that. So you see our papaya trees, the single stalk ones, we have not sprayed. The ones we spray with worm tea branch out. And they, they just go Jurassic Park then with that. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they you found like real trees. Yeah. But when you do aquaponics, do something with your fingers, tumble it out. In a car spark plug, you tend to jump and go shishi. <laughs> Must be a food drop here in the way. Huh? <laughs> there is a free set of hot water pigs and their babies and things this little day. And yeah. I'm going to walk over somewhere I got them. Gotta have the. Um, the free uh, place to keep them. How did it, working with nature instead of against nature? So you got a pig with no flies. She has a mud hole there in the middle that we keep full of water over there. Notice there's no flies around her mud hole. It's all due to the worms and diatomaceous earth. We put diatomaceous earth in the, and you buy it for $25, 50 pound bag. It's in all the flower products you eat in America. It keeps flour from crowding. So we're eating it all the time in flower pot. It doesn't bother us at all. We put it in all of our animal food. It does not bother our animals at all. But when the fly goes to eat it, it cuts up the fly's intestine like swallowing razor blades. So flies only get one meal. Yeah? 
No. In fact, we say all of our animals here have a great life, stress-free. They only have one bad day. No, I had to walk the last because day. these chickens are gooses. Yeah. So, we got over 200 egg-laying chickens, we got over 80 ducks. How am I doing on flies? Keep it in mind, I've not cleaned up in 15 years. Okay? Okay? And that's all due to the worms and the microbiology. Oh, look at those guys in the water there. <laughs> Remember we talked about the koi fish water? Right? The koi fish water gravity feeds all the way over to here. See where the land is over there? It's higher than where we are. So the koi fish pond water comes over to here, it comes out over there, overflows in the duck pond. They all poop in the pond. Then the water goes out, goes to the town, all the way down and out. So these are Polish chickens. Notice he has horns on his head, red horns. Look at that crazy chicken over there. Look at that one and that yeah. one. Look at these two. Polish chickens. What we do here is, at night, the chickens will all sleep up here, they will all poop, and they'll all come down here. Notice that all of our chicken cages, the plastic trays, the plastic trays are to keep the, the chickens from eating what? Worms. The worms. So see here, <coughs> these are our worm beds here. Alright, so, smell test. Oh, yeah, it's not good. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? And so my worms are quite apparently delicious <coughs> to my little guys. And, that, and they just eat it all up. And so we, once a month, we harvest a bin. And out of each bin, we pull twelve to fifteen hundred dollars worth of worms. Really like worms about two right? hours out of here. Okay. So we take the pitchfork and we take the top two inches, put it in five gallon buckets, put it on the tractor, drive over there, run it through the tumbler, and bingo, we got a month's supply of worms to sell the people. Yep. And the whole thing, all underneath here. If you just do it like this, you see the population of worms here. Okay. That's a little a goat. So yep. She gives her saying yum yum yum. This is Miss Natalie Cash here. My partner in crime here doing this. <laughs> yeah. And so you dip about handfuls like this, and it's basically about ten dollars for you know a handful. You know, four handfuls is you know a pound, forty dollars a pound. Most people buy eighty dollars, so start a worm bin and get going. And that, notice all the doors have locks on the inside. That's because if I go in there and I start flipping those over, every chicken wants to come in and help me. You know, notice there's one, one for me and five for them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Look at, yeah, she's, she's my worm bin helper. She gets up to her elbows in them at home. Ducks just eat whatever they can get on the top. Isn't it beautiful? They don't scratch with their feet. So if you have a garden, ducks are much better because they don't damage the whole thing. My grandma has lives in her home. I help them out. Oh, you're the helper with the worms. They take a mite. I'll leave one of these off, come out here tomorrow. They'll dig down some sand. They eat about $80 a pound. But that's why they don't eat every one of these bins because worms are in it. Okay? Um, maybe or maybe not. I'll come back with all the kids that way. It's coming up, falling down, and then it comes out there. See that? If I put it, the further I put it down, the more water I get. If I raise it up, I get much less. Right. Look at my mom. Because we've been around away. You know, we've got because the air is getting out here. Oh, it falls off. That's what that's called. <coughs>
The trick is, you have to have an air release. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the air release, and you come over and you try to go down, where is the air going to go? The air has got to get set free to that water. Good job. So that's just bubbling like that, right? Take a picture of you. You did, you did it before with just that wand. Look at you. Look at you, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, I did the collector so that I could pull the water. If you stick the wand, it'll bubble up. It just goes everywhere, right? So a guy on the internet had the hint on how to do that. And one day, once I saw the hint of it, realizing what a Jimmy had, we do it our system all over the place. Okay. Now, this piece of pipe here, this three-inch piece of pipe, is dug two feet into the ground and has a cap on it, okay? Over here on this one, here, this one, I did not want to dig a hole four feet deep, so I raised the fish tank four feet high, piece of pipe, and there's a cap on the end of it. So whatever the water is in here, is in there, that's what's in here. And then we have a pump rigged to there, and we can pump up. If I move that pump over to here, let me get another pump right there. chance to get the air to move. If I took that and I just stuck it right here, nothing comes out. Right. So that's right. down four feet? Two feet. Two feet. Yeah, though the yeah. Yeah. Right. You got Well, go down as deep as you can. Fifteen feet would be the absolute max ideal. But for a lot of us, that's just too hard to do. It's a, it's, you said it's the distance because the more air, the really the water gets, the ah, easier. If you release the air at 15 feet, it will be 50% larger at the surface. If you release it at 30 feet, it would be double. A one-inch bubble would be a two-inch bubble. Okay? So if I'm making a lot of little bubbles, each one of the bubbles will double in size going up. If I only go up 10 feet, it'll only be a third bigger. Five feet would only be 15% bigger. In other words, the further down you release the air, but you've got to have the pressure to get it down there, right? These little pump only pump with two pounds per, pounds per square inch. That thus will only pump four feet deep at the rated volume. If you go down five feet, you get a lot less. Go down six feet, you get nothing. So you come back up to four feet, and on the side of the pump it says 1.85 psi, and it says 45 liters per minute. You go deeper than that, you get a lot less. Now, if you come up closer to the surface, you get more. You know, you get lots of bubbles, but, but you're not pumping anything. Okay? On this one here, if I hook this one up, what I got here, grab a hose. So it's come all the way, the water's right up to here. Now, so I'm four feet down and I'm about 20 inches here, right? So I've got a four inch pipe, and we can move this back a little bit. Probably should. 80 gallons. Uh, oh, no. I have 100 gallons. Oh, 100 gallons. We used to have 22, and I, everything was great. Right. Do me a favor. Move that one back over. Grab that leg up there. Let's move this back up about three feet. So, yeah, right about there. That's good. Just so people can see what we're doing here. So now, you're going to put air into here. The air is going to go down between the three inch and the two inch. See the sealer here? So she's going to, air is going to go down. It's going to get to the bottom. The air is going to go into the two inch, pump back up, go to there, and come out there. <laughs> and so, this is what we did over at KCC. 
Yeah. It's after you master the regular pump technique. Are you eating your fish? It's a lot of poop. Yeah, a lot of poop, but I don't know. The water looks clean. So now, you're taking water and you're pumping it from this height to that height. That's over 30 inches in that Okay? From a tank that's only 20 inches deep. Mathematically impossible. How do we break the rule? By dropping it down four feet. So we went over to Troy, help me. We dug with a post hole digger. It took us about 20 minutes to dig the hole down. So where's the end of that? Just, this is just sitting in there loose. You can lift that right out. Now how, how long is it? Right, right to the, the bottom. To the oh, bottom. At the very bottom. At the very bottom. All the holes will always be at the bottom. But you're four feet under the ground. No, no right there. No. Stop right there. Okay. See the white cap? Okay. We'll stop right there. All right. I was just too lazy to dig. <coughs> The further you get the, the further you get the air down, the further more lift it has. It has to have a lift. Yeah, Glenn here, giving a tour of the farm. What can I do for you? Who's this? But there's a point so much water. Schools are doing STEM, STEM, S T E M, Science, Technology, Engineering, Math. Chris Evans, a representative from the Big Island has introduced a bill, it's alive, it's going to be up this year for both, to add the A to it, okay? The A is for agriculture. By putting agriculture on the STEM, it brings the science, the engineering, the technology, and the math back. Look at the math we're doing. How many fish can you have? One fish for three gallons. How much sin do you have? One to one ratio. All of a sudden you got a ratio. What's the ratio to your garden? One square foot to every, to every gallon of water, right? And so they, you sneak in math in on without realizing, right? The science, look at the biology you got going on here. You're taking all the, you know, the nitrifying, nitri nitrite, nitrate bacteria, turning the ammonia into nitrogen. That's pure biology, right? The engineering, look at the physics of pumping the water that we're doing. You know, that's a major, you know, changer, you know, for, you know, so that we like to do the mad hot steam. That's our logo. Ta -da! This little thing here, and this is how to breed tilapia fish, okay? If you take the fish eggs and you put them in this little device, which is a two liter Coke bottle, you need to keep the eggs moving to keep them from sticking together, okay? So we strip the fish, we open up the fish's mouth, when she, ha she lays her eggs on the bottom, the male comes and fertilizes them. She goes back, she sucks them into her mouth, and like a mother hen, she holds on to them. When they hatch, they hatch in her mouth, okay? And she opens her mouth, they swim out. Little tiny guys. Any sign of danger, they swim back into her mouth. We call it mouth brooding. They didn't breed in her mouth, they're brooding in the mouth, right? Okay? So she does it. Well, we take them, we take the fish, we strip her of her eggs, we rinse them out of her. She's got a whole mouthful of them. Because as long as she's got eggs in her mouth, she's not going to eat. Like a mother hen doesn't get up and eat. A mother duck didn't get up and eat hardly at all. Right? So they don't gain weight, right? But we strip them out, right? Plus that, 90% of her children will get eaten by the cousins and the nephews and the uncles, okay? Not necessarily mom eating their fish. You know, they don't eat their young, but the, the cousins will, okay? So what they do here, they take a little air pump like this, and you take it, and you take your little air hose, and I took a, taught a course down in the Philippines a couple of months ago, and the guy at the end of the class, he was a businessman, you could tell by his dress and his demeanor, and he showed me that he does this little system. He raises 150,000 baby tilapia a week and sells them for a nickel a piece. Do the math. He's a very well to do man in the Philippines. This is an air pump. The air pump makes bubbles, right? 
off, I take it back out here. I come over here, you got little bubbles going, right? Yep. If you take the bubbles and you put them down in this tube, the further they're down in the tube, just like my airlift pump, they will pump water up. So if I push this down here, they will start bubbling up. The water will come across, the air will come out here, the water will fall down, and notice the things that are in the jar now are moving. Mm -hmm. The water comes out the bottom and gently stirs them up. The suction cups, which you just about worn out there, the fish will then swim free, come up. This is a quarter inch or half an inch below the surface. They will swim out here and they'll be free. I went into the guy's house. He had about 50 little tanks like this. Each one of them had two to 3,000 baby fish in it. He'll put like you know, 2,000 eggs in this thing and they'll all be bubbling up and doing it. You'll be like 500 in a crack and just keep doing them and doing them every week. About 150,000, divide that times a nickel. You get an idea of the economy that the guy is into. So he gave it to Tommy for free. He showed us, we filmed it. We filmed stripping the eggs out. We trimmed how to siphon the water off of them, put them in here at every step of it. He only asked one thing of me. Never show anybody on his island how to do it. <laughs> Take it to another country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what a money-making little deal it is. Well, they make these for me in the Philippines for $10. Okay? You've got about $2 worth of PVC in America, right? With 59 cents, 15 or 59. You couldn't. And then this is a two liter Coke bottle. Okay? His secret, you see the suction cups, right? When you get them, they're new. They're kind of curved shaped, right? One of them is glued into the bottom. So when the water comes down, it just gives a gentle uprising. That was his secret. So the eggs cannot fall down to the bottom. Okay? Anyway. This is all water in here. This seals it, so the water doesn't go out here. The water's going to come in here. The air bubbles go up there, because this hose is down to here, right? The water goes up, goes over. The air escapes. The heavier water falls down. Because the air pump is trying to pump it up here about 3 quarters of an inch. Well, you can't make it out, so the water falls down. Something like my little collector, isn't it? You send the water over, it can't get out, falls down, right? Okay? And so that little device, the guy had worked for eight years in a fishery where they spent a half a million dollars American doing it, and they couldn't make $20,000 a month. And they had employees, and it was a break-even operation. He shared his concept of doing it this way. They decided he wasn't a team player. So he did it on his own, on the side. And when he was selling as much as equal his paycheck, he quit, right? And he's gone on to be the king of tilapia there. Uh, so the Philippines have really picked up on aquaponics. Another gentleman that Natalie and I met, he took a tote, you know the 4 by 4 foot totes? Well here in America, we slice them in half, we throw one half away, we make a fish tank, or sometimes we'll turn it over upside down in that. The man, he took the tote, and he did not cut the metal at all, but he took the plastic out, cut one foot of the plastic off, set it on the side, put the three quarter back in, the three foot back in, and it still has the metal bars across the top, took the empty one and set it up on the top without any frame. It's only going to have about eight inches of gravel in it. He pumped the water straight up to the gravel, okay? Did a little siphon remote like ours, right? And he did it down. This year, he won their equivalent of a, a award for ingenuity, $175,000 American for the ingenuity and for sharing what he's done. And what we're trying to encourage people is, is to share this as rapidly as possible. We're against the patenting thing. When we patent something, it's only for the manufacturing right. But share it, let everybody do it yourself, build your own. You don't want to build one, I'll sell you one for 20 bucks. You know, you know, kind of a thing. Not everybody's into the do-it-yourself thing. Not everybody has a shop in their drill. We have a nice little shop. You're welcome to go in there and check it out. The drill presses, the cuts off. So people come here and pay us $75 an hour. We drill all the holes for them and make their trades for them and get them going. You know, that way I'm able to pay my guys, you know, and, you know, something and that and get it done. But it's not necessary. If you only want to build one system, you don't really want to go buy all the drills, the hole saws and everything for a one-time adventure, right? But this is one cool little system. It's the most ingenious little thing you can do. He goes every Sunday morning, he strips 20 fish tanks, 100 fish in each tank, 20 of them each week will be pregnant. He will strip the eggs from them. So if you've got 20 times 20, you got 400 fish with eggs in them. Anywhere two to 500 eggs, he's stripping them out. 
and, he, and then he dump, puts them in here. Very predictable every week how many fish you have. Then he feeds them male uh, uh, hormone food, which is uh, illegal, and you uh, all the fish will turn into males. Thus, none of the breeders will sell a female fish. That way, everybody who's doing aquaponics aquaculture has to buy their finger. Now they're buying for a nickel, selling for a dollar. We buy for a dollar and sell for five dollars. Who's making more money? He's making 20 times from a nickel to a dollar is 20 times. Mm -hmm. I'm buying for a dollar and sell for five. I'm only five times more. But the dollar sounds richer, doesn't it? Huh? Right? So see, when a Filipino sells his fish for a dollar a pound, he's making more money than I am. Everything being proportional, right? Okay. It's like when, when we hear that the construction worker makes seven dollars a day. Or we had a fellow up here from Cuba. He says, you know, the average Cuban makes twenty dollars a month. Oh, how are you gonna live on that? Then a little girl says, What's the rent for a one bedroom apartment in Havana? This is a dollar a month. Ah, what's the average cost of food for a month? Three to four dollars. It's a different numerical system. Probably the Cuban making twenty dollars paying a dollar rent. Who here in Hawaii pays their rent with one twentieth of their paycheck? For a lot of us, it's half our paycheck. A third to a half of our paycheck to pay our rent. They're one twentieth. So, yeah, it's all, you gotta figure out. My son travels a lot and he says, Dad, all you gotta figure out is how much does a hamburger cost? You know? How many hamburgers do they pay you a day? That's, that's what well. You all see the mini port over here? You know, the macro port? On wheel. And she says, she called me up and asked for permission to buy it. She came home, made a minute. The fish are in there. She's got live fish in there now. The fish water gets pumped up to the cinder bed. It's a double false bottom tray. It goes to the bucket site. The bucket site goes. It has an air brake here. You know, you lift it, break the air, and then it overflows and goes back. I'm not sure, but I think it's the smallest portable aquaponics system in the world. <laughs> huh? How big do you think the fish will get? It's a pound. Yeah. But the point is just for demonstration and for us to take on an airplane to show the different principles, to show that, see, this is your air brake, wherever this tube is in here, right? That's where the air is going to come in. That's where she's going to shut down. She did double trays. She has the bottom, false bottom in there. So then when this thing fills up and it runs, you want to see that drain all the way dry, right? So you get your ebb and flow. Is this the same? Same cloth, the little plastic cloth. So she has made a little tray of it here, right? Yeah. Okay. See, so her little tray here will go totally dry, right? See the bottles under there? The trick on the bottle is when I go traveling, I pour the water out. I check it in. When I get there, I pull the bottles up, they displace the water and give me my false bottom there. Yeah? So I can carry a lot less rock with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Natalie dreamed this one up. Those, anybody here into engineering and physics? This is a little 24 watt air pump. The air's coming out there. It's going that green hose. It comes over here. When it gets to here, it goes into the bottom. In the bottom, do you guys recognize it? The ones that went on tour with me? the little pump, right? And I have a second one around sitting around here. Ha! Ah, here it is. Right here. The air is going into there. It comes down. It doesn't know whether to go left or right. It tries both ways. This way, it gets out, and so it goes up, and this is screwed to the bottom of that bucket. So the air is going to come in, go over, and it's going to pump up. You see the water coming in? It's going to pump in and go into the bottom of this bucket, which has holes in it. Then I put worm castings in there, and so the water will come through the bucket, into the worm castings, and make worm key. Now the magic behind this one is this. If I aim this straight down, it will pump the water higher. Because the deeper this is in the water, the more the pressure. If I turn this up to here, it'll only pump the water about two inches and then release. Because this is the back door. So you watch this. Where she's going up here now, she'll come up to about this far. And if you look in here, you can come over and take a look. You'll see the back door in the water. When she gets up to the top, she's going to trip and go out the back door. When it does that, once the air starts going out, you got 24 pounds of water up here. It will collapse down into here pick up the water and go out and inertia. Once it starts going, nothing will stop it until the water comes all the way to the very bottom. 
And then the air says, wait a minute, let's go back up again. And this thing will fill and go up and down every three or four minutes. So we're up to here now, right? Now she's back flushing. See you going up, back flushing? So the water comes into the worm casting, then goes out. It goes into the worm casting, and then go out. There are no moving parts in it. There's no electricity in the water. Okay. Now, you see the pipe coming around out the side here? It has a one-way check valve at the bottom. There's a two-inch shower drain. It comes around there, comes over here, comes up here, comes to here. I think I stole my hose from here. Let me get it back. A five gallon bucket or pump it out to your garden. Rather than take a hundred dollar submersible pump, electric, putting it in there and handling it with wet hands and electricity and all that, plus I keep taking cell phone calls, forgetting the pump, come back, oh the water's all gone out but I've killed another pump, right? So instead of doing that, if I come over here and I leave this hose hooked up here, if I send air down here, the air is going to go down this tube, come over, come up here, come out, and go down over there. So now, like the one you saw up there by the fish tank, I don't have to handle any electricity at all. I just close one valve. Uh -oh. Oh. Maybe I'll get a bucket. <laughs> So, now if I want to empty this drum out, I just do this and I have air pumping out my water. So more and more guys, we're only using air to pump our water. We're doing away with all mechanical pumps entirely. In the Philippines, we're going to show a film here. We'll show you where we use air to bump 30 feet up into a tower, release into the tower, gravity feed out of that 30-foot tower to a one-acre aquaponics system. And where we do aquaponics one acre, that would be four-foot raceway, four-foot aisleway, four-foot raceway, four-foot aisleway. We're only growing in 50% of the space, right? Because we want a walkway. After I left the Philippines, they capped the ends and flooded all the middle. When they plant an acre, they plant a damn acre. And they, the kids walk on the railing down. When I come, they pump out one section so I can walk down. And they lift the trays out for me. But you see the speed that this thing will pump it down? And this will pump this to absolute zero. Okay? It's the only air pump we know of in the world that can pump to zero. Okay? okay. That's because of the one-way valve. Did you all see the one-way valve out there working on the C3 yet? Okay, out there. When I want to go back to making tea, just switch the valve. And she goes back to making tea. And so we on the garden out there, we make 50 gallons of worm tea every day. And then on the weekend, we put EM in there. And the EM eats up all the biofilm that gets built up in it. It just naturally digests it all. And then we throw that into it. Yeah. Find that errors? These are different air pumps, by the way, here they're making. This is one a gentleman made yesterday. This just drops into that pipe. We send air down here. The water comes up and bubbles out here with the QLO on. It's around about 200 gallons an hour. Very, very simple to make. Yep. They just got an air wand in there, right? And he did it. So we have a lot of fun experimenting with the different ones. Could you do me a favor? Come up here to the fish tank. Give me one, a second pump. One that says 40 watt. 40 watt. Just steal it off of anything out there. If I can have two pumps. I can take one pump out and just stick in another pump and test them out. So this is a fellow, he came, he's from Russia. And uh, Vlad, he works with Troy and I this week. We came over yesterday, we were experimenting, and he said, well, why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? And I said, well, rather than telling me it simply wouldn't work, better just to show him it won't work. Then it worked, and then I acted like I knew it was going to work all the time, right? Yeah? Let's see. Yeah, this one, this one. By the way, one little secret I learned is on all these air pumps and everything else, 
as soon as you buy the air pump, hook on a hose and put on a garden hose fitting. After that, folks, garden hose fittings are made to take 40 to 60 pounds of water pressure. We're only dealing with 2 to 5 pounds of air pressure. Very, very low air pressure, right? Coordinated. Once I do this, I can come out here in the dark and change out a pump from different brands, different sizes, just something to get through the night without having to hunt for a socket set, a screwdriver, a wrench, a hose clamp, all the other nonsense, right? Give me the end of that. So this was the man's, this is from Russia. Oh, let's see, which one is this one? That one is this one. Too many green hoses, huh? And just rinse them off in the water to get the grit out of it. Never try to put the, these things together with the grit on So we come to here. Now, turn the air to that way. Turn it off to that way. And then it does pump. Is that simple? Huh? That is nothing but a two inch piece of pipe with the little half inch one with the holes in it, right? Yeah. Okay. So we cap it, we drill a hole. We drill them at a 45 degree angle. But I got confused the other day and I drilled them all backwards and they still work. You know, so you get away with a lot of stuff on this. So we came to here, came to here. Now when he did it, he didn't have this piece, and the water was coming out with the hose. But I know I want to hook plumbing, so I came up with the idea of putting this piece on. That way, I get rid of the hose, right? The hose is coming up and out of the way, right? And then that lets me... Now I can hook plumbing to here, right? If I had the hose coming out there, how could I stick a pipe? So I need to get rid of that, and that lets the air go out, right? So the air can escape, and there you go. And you got yourself a water pump. So all kind of contraptions. Now what we do is we put a five gallon bucket and we time it. And what we want to do, we want to see the five gallon bucket fill up in one minute. Five gallons in one minute, right, is, is five times, you know, if you do it in one minute, that's five times 60 is 300 gallons an hour. That's good enough for any backyard system. Okay. Now, uh, Alex was with me and uh, a couple of the other guys. Uh, we went out to uh, Hadama's Fish Farm. They do koi. We rigged up one like this, but this was three inch, and we had a bigger air compressor. Ready for this? Fill a five gallon bucket up in five seconds. Okay? That's a gallon a minute. That's 60 gallons a minute times 60 minutes. It's 3,600 gallons an hour, and that will do any commercial farm. He has 120 1,200-gallon fish tank, and he was running a, uh, all electric pumps on it, 65 watts each. Kadama's electric bill is $10,000 a month, so they hired us as a consultant to go out there to get it down. They want it under $3,000. I can do it with air. So we went out, and in six hours, we were able to rig them up with an air pump and chuck them. Now, they won't, they're not going to hire me to do all 120 tanks. They just hire me for the lesson, and they'll do all their 120 tank with their, you know, $10 an hour guys. You know, and do it, right? But we're doing this, and it's coming out a three inch pipe and roaring. So, <laughs> One way valve. The intake is right here. See the water going up and down in here? See it surging? It's sucking. The one way valve opens. The air's coming in the green hose, comes over. It's burping up here. I got this one curved, aiming it with just a little slit to let the air out. So 90% of the water is going that way instead of going up and falling down, right? Once I'm this high, see the cinder beds down there? They're six inches lower. So I go down to the ground and run around the back, come up over there, six inches lower, the water comes out there. This is just sitting, there's nothing. I pop off this bungee cord, I can just lift this out. Okay, is that simple? Okay. We did a similar one in Maui, right? Yeah, yeah, that's like the local line. Yeah. 
<laughs> I wasn't doing, I didn't want to dig. So. Huh? Yeah, you know, I did do this. But this one, when I go to the Philippines. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right. See the big bulb? Where did you get that? At uh, Wyman Feed Store, $25. R E E S, Aquatic Ecosystems on the internet. And which way you got it? Uh, you go only this way. Did you see the one underneath there in the clear pipe? Let's take a walk. I want to show you that. Yeah. I mean, the bigger the item, right? The, the, these are food grade and they're only four and a half dollars at Hardware Hawaii, locally available. The AES one is six dollars and fifty cents, but you pound it through. The problem we're having with the pound through, little things are splitting on us, even on the buckets. So we, we were using them on the bottom of the buckets and out the side of the bucket. After about six months, I get a split. The customers are calling me up telling me their bucket siphon. I have to go make them a whole new one. So now we don't come out the sides anymore. We go out the bottoms mm -hmm. like this. Now this is a commercial through hole. That's eight and a half, nine dollars. These are four dollars and fifty cents. If I want the pipe to go all the way through, grind down the stops and I go all the way through. Okay. This one has stops. This one's been ground down, so it can go all the way in. Okay. It's a minor thing. And when we find out the Dremel tool that we use, we buy a little half inch metal bit. It has a, like a grindstone, except it's metal on it. I've been using the same stone for four years. Because it's metal, it doesn't get gummed up like a, uh, like a grinding wheel is. It's really a cutting wheel. And it goes off. Then these will each have boards on them that have holes in them. And we put all the plants in them. Now the unique thing about this is, this the water will fill up in here. It will fill up in the bucket. The bucket will have a pipe siphon coming to here. Most time you go 100% here, then go sideways and sideways, and then go back. We go down. We will put one third in each one. Stop by Kapilani Community College. Take, we just installed that last week, finished Friday. The pipe comes out of here with a two inch, comes over here, two inch T, two inch T, and two inch T. So we put parallel feed. It is the first aquaponics system doing a parallel feed that we're aware of. Most of them, Ricosi, all these other guys, they put it in, go 100 feet, come back 100 feet, go out 100 feet. So 100% the, of the water is going 100% of the way. What we're doing is putting one third into each one. And each one has this individual overflow. I can cut each one of these to whatever height I want to. Right? This one, by the way, we install these systems like this, and we show up at 8 o'clock in the morning. The fish are in it turned on and the plants being planted at any time. Okay? It's like a little erector set. These boards are independent here. We just stack up the bricks. We would level it off. We haven't leveled this one yet. We're having class do that. We stack it all up here. It's as fast as I can unload it off the truck. And all, we've already pre-cut all the pipe. We glue it on site. Okay. Now the one we did over at Capulani, we delivered it Monday. By noon, we had it delivered. And we kind of played with where we were going to put things. Tuesday morning, we worked till five, from eight in the morning till five. Wednesday, and Thursday, and finally Friday at noon, we were done. Custom setup using three foot by five foot masonry tray. We built a pipe siphon instead of using a bucket. We get a three inch pipe coming up and overflow going in. You know, something like what the pipe siphon is here. It's just everything in three inch. When we do three and four inch, I do some four inch ones. They pump 1,200 gallons a minute coming out. I got to drain a 6,000 gallon bed in three minutes. Yeah, so I have to have like five, six of them going down to drain it that fast. Because you don't want to drain slow. When you drain, it's like a toilet. You want your toilet to flush slowly or rapidly. You want it to kick butt and get gone, right? Yeah. So you, to move solids in water, the water's got to move at five feet per second. Okay? Otherwise, the solids drop out. So when we, when we flush these things, we want it to really move. Now, once the water leaves here, and when it gets to here, it's clean water. Then it can just overflow, and as long as this is one inch higher than that fish tank, the water goes back to the fish tank. Okay. Okay. So it's a very, very low energy. We run these systems on either 24 watt or 38 watts. We did KCC, we put a 60 watt because we had to pump the water what was that, 40, 45 inches high. The way they're on a contoured piece of land, from the fish tank to the top of the center bed, 45 inches. The fish tank's only 20 inches deep. That defies all logic. So, post hole digger, we dug a four foot hole, we dropped in a four inch pipe, plumbed it to the side of the thing. Now my pump thinks it's in a six foot deep tank. 
that, but it's just four foot inch pipe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But all the physics in it is as if I had a six foot deep fish tank. And at a six foot deep tank, we pumped 45, we filled a five gallon bucket up in 40 seconds. 40 seconds. That's 450 gallons an hour. All right. The so fish tank's only 300, so I got my once an hour. Plenty to spare. Yeah. Well, he'll answer your question while I'm down here. If your water will run low, what you want to do is just replace water back in. And why your water will run low, you either have the plant in here absorbs a lot of it out, so you would replace it. Or you might have an overflow still, something's moving wrong way, you put water in there. You try to keep your fish tank in an adequate amount of water, not to overflow, but enough water so that your fishes are not stressed out. And that's what takes care of our recirculating system. This little tank 